Hey guys, Lewis Frost with Phobos Solutions. We're here with Trigger Time TV and we're going to give you a tactical tip. We're up at Elite Firearms Training in Lumberton, Mississippi, utilizing their great range of facility. What we're going to talk to you today about is the importance of establishing the master grip in the holster. One of the things we see with new shooters or even experienced shooters is when they start to get in a hurry or start to try to present that gun in rapid fashion, they lose the ability to get a good, firm master grip in the holster. And what I mean by master grip is we want to do everything that we need to get done with that dominant hand while that gun is in the holster. So when we grip the gun, we want to make sure we have firm purchase high up on the back strap, flush with the beaver tail with no space between the webbing of our hand and the beaver tail. We're trying to get that good, even, consistent pressure because if we don't get that, what you'll see is in a, lot, in a lot of TV and movies, you'll get that gap between the beaver tail and the webbing of your hand. That does several things. It causes the gun to present improperly. It also causes the additional felt recoil. So one of the things that we really, really harp on is when you're do, doing your range training as well as when you're doing your dry practice is to do certain things consistently like establishing that good master grip. So the first thing we have to do as a concealed carry holder is clear that cover garment, drive our hand down in between our abdomen and the back of that gun, get that good master grip as high up on the back strap as we can. We'll go ahead and demonstrate this for you live. I'll go ahead and put my ear pro on so you all can see what it looks like. Because we utilize that high master grip, what it does is it allows the gun to track much flatter and aids us in our ability to shoot fast. So we're going to drive the gun in, grab, drive the gun out, index. Very, very little felt recoil. You'll also notice that the sights tracked incredibly flat. We'll go ahead and reholster and we'll grab the gun much lower so you can see the difference. So we're here, clear that cover garment, get that low purchase on that gun like we talked about. Notice the increased recoil of the gun. For more information on training and tactics as well as some of the gear we're using, the G-Code Incog, visit us at phobussolutions.com. Against an armed robber, you've always got to wait your turn and then act decisively. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Venice, California. Shows us a scary armed robbery that's gonna go really wrong for the armed robber and teach us some important lessons here about waiting your turn in an armed robbery and about practicing the five Ds correctly to protect yourself and everyone around you. The store owner here and the employee are just having a regular day until this guy comes in and announces an armed robbery, starts pointing a gun at people. And that's the store owner in the gray shirt and he plays you know, compliant until such time as the armed robber's not paying attention to him and now it's on. Tries to get him in a full Nelson and he's going to drive this guy out of the store and, and protect himself and his employee. And you can see him finally get him out of the store as the employee runs off and now they're having a fight on the sidewalk. Imagine driving by and seeing this as the, the owner here is trying to get that gun away from him and he's got two hands on one there. But what we see is that the, the armed robber is able to transfer the gun into his other hand. They break contact. Thankfully, the armed robber runs off and this one's over. Let's learn some lessons from this one here. First one's about transitional spaces. We can see that the armed robber launches the armed robbery without any notice whatsoever because of this transitional space that he's able to ambush his intended victims. Next, we're gonna see the owner in the solid gray shirt there. Feign compliance, hey, I don't want any problems. He waits his turn. It's very important in an armed robbery, but when he decides to act, you can see him there wait until the armed robber's not paying attention to him, but once that armed robber is not paying attention, he acts definitively. I think that's an excellent attitude and is a reason he got ahead here. He tried to use a full Nelson, and I'm not so sure that that was great technique or whatever. It did get him to have some dominance over the guy, though, and the guy isn't able to counterattack, and you can just barely see him try to get one hand or both hands on the arm as the other employee runs off. I wish I'd have had help instead, but you know, we don't blame him if he doesn't have skills. We do see the owner here get two hands and two, you know, on the uh, offending arm there so that he can dominate that tool. And that's an excellent strategy to get that two on one dominance so that he cannot get it back. But you gotta work those five Ds pretty quickly, you know, deflect, dominate, distract, disarm, disable, because eventually here, what this armed robber is able to do, you can see the empty hand, he transfers the gun into his left hand. We can see that here. And so he was continuing to be a threat. So you gotta work through those fairly quickly. And I applaud the owner here. He did a fine job because the guy's gonna run off of protecting himself and his employee, but you gotta be careful to do it fairly quick so that you cover your ass. Hey guys, I'm Nate Stokes with Advantage Group. Welcome to the Gear Locker. Today we're gonna to talk about one of the exciting new offerings from SIG Electro Optics, and that's the Romeo 5. The Romeo 5 is a micro red dot. Really exciting. This was an underserved segment of the market with really just one viable option. SIG has brought a second option to the table at a really competitive price point. 
I'm excited about this optic. It offers a ton of features. It's proven to be extremely rugged and durable. I've got it mounted on a BCM rifle here with a kinetic development solution side lock mount. It's a mounting system I'm also pretty excited about. One of the features I really like about the Romeo 5 is the ability to adjust brightness using the controls here on the top. If you notice on the top of the rifle, on the top of the optic here, I've got a plus and minus button for adjusting dot intensity. I like that a little bit more than the rheostat that we typically see on optics like the, uh, the Aimpoint series. It uses a, a readily available battery, which is key. You know, if my optic uses a battery that's hard to find or is really expensive, that limits the utility of the optic. So we use a commonly available battery. I recently picked up a battery for one of these at Home Depot next to the cash register. So it wasn't hard to find. It didn't cost me a fortune. Really easy to zero. The turrets are marked, simple to use. Doesn't require any tools to remove the turrets or to adjust the various reticle. We have some raised areas built into the caps here, and that's actually how we adjust for our elevation and windage. So that's nice that they've included all that in the optic for us. It's a great option for the uh, micro red dot on a carbine. I think it's going to be incredibly popular with both sports shooters and in the law enforcement world as it continues to penetrate the market. Perform great. Couldn't ask more from it. It's uh, something I'm excited about mounting on one of my own rifles and uh, using in the field from here on out. One of the things I'm really excited about with the Romeo 5 is its possibility for law enforcement officers. It's difficult in a lot of cases for agencies to buy a quality optic for their, their officers, and those officers end up buying their own optics. With the Romeo 5, we have a competitive, effective, reliable optics option that's not going to break the bank. So it certainly comes in at a great price point. I'm Nate Stokes, and thanks for joining me in the Gear Locker.